Hello, all of my friends from YouTube. I am finally back to give you an update on the garage. Uh, my firstborn was born April 8th, so needless to say, I don't have much time anymore. All the dads know what I'm talking about. But without further ado, let's go check out the garage. All right, so from the front, you can see all of my imperfections in my softening. Uh, I ended up putting the softening on a little bit too tight. And uh, as you can see, it crinkled a little bit here on the front and even on the side. And some of this might have been because a lot of the wood was wet because I had like a solid week of rain that I was literally out here in rain gear putting on the softening. But as you can see, I finally got the two garage doors. These uh, took about six months to be delivered. I still haven't done the trim on the inside of the garage doors, but that's just because I've been trying to uh, work on the inside and get those garage doors pretty much situated. But as you can see, the whole exterior is, is done, shingled and sided all the way around, but let's go check out the inside. All right, so as you can see, I've mostly been working in the inside. I have the T-Bird up here. Um, I sold my rental property and had to move this from the other garage up to here. So uh, everything's pretty much inside of here. Everything that I need. As you can see from this side, I got the garage door on this side hung. I have this one upright, but I just have to put the hangers up uh, and finish that. Now to answer the biggest question that I got while I've been absent is how much am I into this garage? And the answer is $17,584.17. That's a tally of all of the receipts that I have so far. Obviously, that does not include my own labor. Typically, labor tends to be the most expensive, so that's, that's why you know, you're paying more for a garage being built by somebody else. The next question was, how was I able to get all of my materials so cheaply? And the short answer to that is 1,000 feet of lumber statistics in the U.S. trading economy. The 1,000 feet of lumber is basically the statistic for the prices of wood and how they change. I bought all my wood in September, and if you look at the statistics for 2021's September's 1,000 feet of lumber, it was around $460 from a high of $1,776 at the peak of the pandemic. So at that time, August into September, I knew it was getting really low, so I, I bought low and uh, was able to then leverage the market and get myself some cheap wood. Moving on to some of the other updates, I think that some of you with a keen eye might have noticed that I have um, a larger black wire and some 12 gauge yellow jacketed Romex going through the, uh, the walls here. All of that is for my two 40 amp outlets. I did 40 amps just because one, I can weld, two, I can hook up um, an RV because we do have an RV. And also because I wanted to be able to run a large compressor. So there's actually a loop of wire that comes down here so that if I want to change this to a direct hookup for like a 60 gallon compressor, I can hook it up right here and not have any problems. I also ran 80 amp or sorry, 20 amp uh, Romex all the way through every six foot has an outlet with that. I also installed an air conditioning unit from one of my rental properties in here. This is a 12,000 BTU. It's direct plugged in here. And this is one of the things that was drawing on that circuit and had no issues. Now, one thing I will tell you, it's been really hot in Pennsylvania lately. The other day it hit 99 degrees. So when I was doing the, the ceiling in here, uh, it was really nice having the air conditioner running and really keeping the temperature down. It kept it down to like 80 degrees instead of 99. So I'm happy with that. But eventually I think we're going to get um, two split ductless uh, zones, one down here and then one upstairs. So that's probably the next uh, part of the infrastructure that's going to go in just because uh, we're going into the winter seasons and um, I want to have a heat pump so that we can have supplemental heat here. Climbing up here to the uh, second floor, as you can see, there's something up there. Let's go up there. Three-way light switch goes up there as well. So climbing up the ladder. All right, so now that we're up on the second floor, as you can see, I have this lam uh, laminated beam across here on these two two by fours. 
And those are bolted in to uh, create our truss setup for our elevator. And I have some Unistrut downstairs that is basically gonna be the main rails for the elevator to go up and down, but I'm not as concerned with getting that together yet, uh, only because I still have building materials to uh, bring up here and finish the second floor. I did pick up some um, unused brand new shutters for the outside to put on this front end. And then I also brought up some of my uh, roof insulation and venting material from one of my other jobs down at the rental property. So those will all go in here and then we can start closing in the second floor. But before I go on talking about for the next hour, some nonsensical philosophical things, I just want to say thank you to everyone that continues to watch my channel and has helped me grow. Uh, this project in itself has been a, a great growth platform for me. This is the largest structure that I've ever built by myself. And yes, it seemed a little bit daunting in the beginning, but I've always been one to see the benefit in taking the path least traveled. And I encourage you to do the same. Mitigate your risk on that you know, path, but definitely try to take the path um, less traveled because typically there's a lot of uh, value that you can pick up on that route. But other than that, guys, I am all done here. Uh, until the next update video, see you later.